Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. September 20th, Josiah Henson. Born into slavery, Josiah refused to remain enslaved. When he was 18, he became a Christian and soon began to preach after slaving all day. He also married and had 12 children. In 1830, Josiah escaped to Canada and founded a settlement and a laborer's school for other fugitive slaves. In 1842, he founded the British American Institute, an Afro-Canadian community and industrial school, a refuge for escaped slaves. Real strength comes from facing real weakness. Before he escaped to Canada and gained freedom for himself and his family, Josiah Henson had spent nearly four decades as a slave. While in Canada, Josiah's oldest son, Tom, had the opportunity to go to school and get an education. He learned to read, and Josiah would often ask his son to read the Bible to him to help him memorize the stories and verses he needed to preach on. One early Sunday morning before church, Tom had been reading from the Psalms and asked, Father, who is David? Tom was eager to learn about the Old Testament king who had written the Psalm he had just read. But even though Josiah was a preacher, he had no idea who David was. It wasn't because he didn't want to know. It was because Josiah had never learned to read. And because he had never learned to read, he had never read the story of David. Josiah was afraid to admit to his son that he didn't know how to read because he didn't want Tom to think less of him. Because of this, he tried to give his son a simple answer, one that hopefully had no follow-up questions. He was a man of God, my son, Josiah said. But the answer wasn't what Tom was looking for. He already knew David was a man of God, but Tom wanted to know where David lived and what he did. How had David become a man of God? The questions came at Josiah like a whirlwind, so any chance to avoid the real answer became impossible. After minutes of listening to Tom's pleading, he finally admitted he didn't know anything about David. But Tom saw deeper into Josiah's admission. He questioned, Why? Father, can't you read? Josiah felt his spirit sink. To Tom, Josiah was the very definition of what it meant to be a man. He was the leader, the protector, and the provider of his family. Admitting to his son that there was something he couldn't do was very embarrassing. But Josiah couldn't lie. He admitted the truth. He could not read. Why not? Tom asked curiously. Josiah responded, Because I never had an opportunity to learn, nor anybody to teach me. Back in America, slaves were not allowed to have an education. They weren't permitted to learn anything about letters or words. Tom said, well, you can learn now, Father. Josiah wanted to laugh. He was nearly 50 years old. He said, I am too old and have not time enough. There is nobody to teach me. But Tom would not accept any excuses. Why, Father, I'll teach you. I can do it, I know, and then you'll know so much more that you will be able to talk better and preach better. Josiah was shocked at his son's persistence. He always knew that he wanted his children to be more successful in life, and it was no surprise that someone like Tom would grow up to know more than him because of better opportunities. But to learn from his own son, learn a skill that most people master in their childhood, he never expected such a turn of events. Fathers were supposed to instruct their children, not the other way around. But Josiah knew that Tom was right. Tom could help him. Their lessons began. And at first, it wasn't easy for Josiah to learn or for Tom to teach. But as the weeks and months passed, Josiah eventually learned to read. And the knowledge he acquired burned in him an even deeper passion to help others especially those who had been denied an education because of slavery. Proverbs 4 or 5 says, Get wisdom, 
get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. When you find that you need help, are you willing to ask for it? Real strength comes from facing real weakness. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.